Hello friends, welcome to Mid-Morning Manna. Lonnie Mattingly here, glad you've tuned in. Hope you'll stay tuned for the next eight, 10 minutes, maybe seven. I don't know, it just depends. But uh, we're talking this week about how to have personal revival in your life. Well, how we need revival, how important it is. And here we are on Friday, and I hope you're getting ready for a great weekend at your church. Just believing God to speak to your heart and to be a blessing to you, but also anticipating the opportunity you're going to have to be a blessing to others. Maybe to greet a visitor, a first-time visitor, just to go up and say, welcome. We're so glad you're here today. Is there any way, anything I can do for you or whatever? And just be somebody for God. Let God use you. Have revival. Have a spirit of revival in your heart and in your life. And we've been talking about how to have that personal revival and how important it is. And I don't have time to go back and review the, uh, the first four days right now, but you can still see them. They're online there. Just scroll down and go to them. Go to Pastor Lonnie Mattingly on YouTube and uh, you'll find them there together. And how to have a personal revival. So important that we have revival in our own hearts in our own lives, really on a daily basis, but especially at least on a weekly basis, we ought to get fired up and revived up and, and stirred up to want to do more for God, to want to be used in greater ways of God, to make sure we've got our sins confessed and, and got that all cleared out and forgiven and going forward for the Lord Jesus Christ, how important it is. Well, today it's Friday and I want to give you number five today. Number five, put into practice the law of of sowing and reaping. Let, let me read you something here from 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verses 6 through 8. The Bible says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Boy, that's a great passage. That's a little bit lengthy, but it, it, you ought to read it over. You ought to jot it down. You ought to write it down in your notebook somewhere. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. And we're talking about how to have that personal revival. And the point today is, number five, putting into practice the law of sowing and reaping. And that's what he talked about right here in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 8. God is able, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Everything good that God wants you to do, you're going to be able to abound in it as you learn to practice that law of sowing and reaping. The Bible says, well, what, what do I sow? Well, one thing for sure in Mark chapter number four and verse 14, the Bible says, the sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. You see, that's what we go. We're going out into the world, not to uh, probably very few, if, if any, not many of us have a farm and go out and sow crops to grow in the growing season and then to harvest at the harvest time and then to take to market or to use for our family throughout the year. Uh, very few people do that anymore. But I tell you one thing, it used to be a time in America where almost everybody did some of that and, and, and several people did a lot of it. And my wife grew up on a little country, a little city farm, really, uh, and uh, out on, off Preston Highway and uh, worked in the, in the fields, all those kind of things. And, but, but the truth is what we need to be sowing as Christians to have revival in our life and to spread revival to others, we need to be sowing the word of God. Again, Mark 4.14 4 says, the sower soweth the word. It's the word of God. In Galatians chapter six, let me just give you this, this last one. I'll talk about it then just a minute or two, let you go today. But in Galatians, 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 Galatians chapter number six and uh, verses seven through nine, be not deceived. <laughs> Listen to that. The old deceiver, the devil, he'd like to deceive you. Mm -hmm. But God's word says, be not deceived. So you need to be aware of this. You potentially could be deceived. So don't do things that will allow the devil to have access to your heart and mind. Uh, shut him out. Shut him out. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. 
For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Listen, you say, well, I tried it once and it didn't work for me. <laughs> you can't just try it once. Farmer said, well, I put a grain of corn out there in the field and I watched it and it sort of almost grew up. And then some some deer or some rabbit or something came in there and chewed the leaves off of it. And I just got no use to try. It takes more than that. You, you've got to sow. You've got to, you've got to believe. You've got to prepare. You've got to prepare the soil. You've got to do, do the plowing. You've got to put the seed in. You've got to water it. And you, it, the, the, of course, there's some work to be done. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So we just need to be sowers. Just always be looking. Always be looking for that opportunity. There may be people that are watching right now and you say, boy, I wish I could be a better witness for Christ. I wish I could see people come to Christ. I, I wish I could lead somebody in prayer, helping them to receive Christ. Well, number one, learn how to do it. Go through the verses. And when your church is having a, a, a witnessing class or a soul winning class uh, or evangelism class, whatever you want to call it. Sign up. Go to that class. Memorize those verses. Mark your Bible and have it ready so that you can open it right to that page and, and point to that verse and read it and let them see it and help them come to Christ. Just sow the Word of God and you'd be amazed how God will use you to make a difference in people's lives, to help them in your own home with your family devotions, help your children to grow in Christ and plant that, those seeds. It's a sad day we're living in today where people are taking their kids to everything in the world except the house of God. It's just a terrible thing. And we need to get back to the Bible and back to the word of God. And uh, I just want to take them and shake them and say, "Come, what's wrong with you, man? Are, you, you see our country going downhill. You complain about it all the time. And yet you're doing uh, the very people that God put in your life so that you could help them have victory, so that you could help them to be successful, so you could help them to be part of the cure instead of part of the problem in America. And you have taken them away from the very thing that can make a difference. You've, you've said to them, without saying it verbally, you've said to them, church isn't really important. The Bible isn't really important. Serving Jesus really isn't important. Why in the world would you do that? Ask God to use you. Ask God to fire you up. Ask God to light those fires of personal revival in your life. And then ask God to help you to share that with the world that your life touches. Make a difference. Do it for Christ's sake. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, I know I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, fired up today and, and uh, could go on and on. But Lord, I pray you'll just take what has been said and make the application in the hearts of the people that need it, that really want to do something, that really want to have a personal revival in their life and have the courage and the boldness to do something with it, not just to sit on it and say, I wish I was more outspoken, but Lord, help them to be outspoken. And Father, we just give you the praise. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.